Hi, I'm Ian and welcome to the Concept Kit plugin workflow series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic multi-user workflow for end display and in-camera VFX. Okay, so if you've been following along with this series, you should have an in-camera VFX uh, template here. All right, so first off, you're going to want to go to plugins and then you're going to go multi-user editing you're going to make sure that this is enabled it may not be in your project and then you're going to restart then you're going to go to project settings and then you're going to go to your multi-user editing you're going to enable the toolbar button and then uh, i generally go down here and make a display name i just call it main uh, you can call it master, you can name it the machine that you're on, uh, whatever you want to do, but it does get saved in these project settings here. Okay, so you'll probably have to restart the project now. Okay, now that the project has restart, uh, we're up here uh, in your toolbar tab. You're going to see a browse. Uh, you can click on that and that will bring up a menu We'll bring up this guy. Probably just be floating at first. I generally like to keep this down here. Easy to get to in this lower, uh, more wide uh, docking area. It, it fits well. Um, and then you also have uh, some other things here, your settings uh, and launch a, a server. But we're going to launch a server down here. All right, so we're going to create a server and that is going to uh, just create a server running on this machine that other machines will be able to connect to and will hold these uh, sessions. I already have a session here that I will delete. And then uh, I'm just going to create a session and name it S1. So before you do that, before you hit enter and before you create this session and create a session here, you're going to take a look at where it says server and then your uh, computer name. And uh, in the description, if you, if you can't get to this, I will link the documentation on this, but I will also have just this command here. Uh, this is what we're going to give end display to tell it to log in to this session on this server. So we're going to tell it where the server is and then we're going to tell it what session to log in and then what name to use and then uh, a couple other things, auto connect and messaging. Uh, mine is already set up here so you're going to want to take what's here and put it as your server name. Okay, once that's done, uh, create your session. And your project has to be saved before you can enter in the session. Uh, if you don't save your project before you enter in the session, it's going to give you an error. So make sure that you already are saved. Okay, so that command that we created here, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy it. Uh, normally, I like to have a notepad somewhere that has just random things that I need while I'm working because sometimes I may want to have end display connect into a multi-user session. Sometimes I might not want to deal with that if I need to just bring it up and down really quick to test something. Uh, so I try not to uh, have this too far away, be able to get to it. Uh, and then I have my notepad always docked here so I can get to it quickly. So we're going to copy that. We're going to open up our launcher and our listener, which you may already have open. Uh, and then if you come over here, com custom command line arguments. We're going to place that there. Oop, that is not that. I'm going to place that there. Okay, so for this, I'm going to use the baseline config here, uh, the example config that the VP toolkit comes with. All right, so now when you hit run on your system, however you have it set up, you'll see that end display is going to connect to that session that you had started, you'd created. 
Uh, if you create a session with a, a separate name, you will have to uh, change that. So now I'm going to show you a little example of it in use, and then we're going to back out of it. Okay, so now any changes that I make to the level should come through as history updates in this session and then end display running its version of the editor is going to pick up those history changes and make it happen uh, so you're going to have a little bit of a delay while this happens uh, it's not spot on so you can't use it for tracking data or anything like that because you'd end up with a ton of history here so but it is a good way to connect and have anything that happens here happen there uh, it, some blueprints uh, will not translate through. Uh, they don't get added here. But we will make a few adjustments here. I'll just bring this back here. Bring this over here. And then now I'm going to shut down end display. So back in the editor here, we're going to leave the current session. I use this little icon here. I know that there is another way to get to it. So what it's asking you here is whether or not you want to persist the changes that you made within this session. So by doing that, you're going to commit all of these history changes that you've made to the save that you have on this machine that this editor has opened from. You will not be able to do that if end display is still open because it will uh, lock it. So this gets into more complicated storage uh, when you are and ways of managing your stage, uh, source control, things like that when you get into multi-node systems. But I'm not going to get into that in this section of the video. So I'm going to persist the changes and that is going to, uh, if you if you choose to not persist the changes, it will just go back to however it was before you entered the session. So sometimes you may have done a lot of edits and sometimes you might not want to keep the things that were done in there. Uh, so we're gonna persist. And then now we're back to where we were. We can save and then if we want to, we can go directly back into that session and then rerun end display. And then now we'll have control over the level again. So there are some things in this that do not, uh, that you may have issues with, sometimes bringing in a lot of textures. Uh, if it starts to not respond, sometimes hitting save current will actually push the, uh, the history through so that it can read it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you've liked this video and check out vp-toolkit.com for more information and more videos.